we're going to cover the two new Pixie sensors, an indoor sensor and an outdoor sensor. Now it's July 2023, obviously you can tell from the background, this video will shot at a different time compared to the rest of the course because they've uh, sensors have just come out. So this video will probably be a little bit longer than some of the others because what we're going to do is we're going to put both sensors into this one video rather than splitting them up and that's because the, the capabilities and the features of the sensor are very common across the indoor and the outdoor with the exception of some PE sensing or sunset switch capability that the outdoor sensor has. So let's jump into it. So to start off with we're going to go through some of the basic tech around the sensors. We're gonna look at some of the individual technical specifications for the products just to round that out. We'll jump in and have a look at the app in action so you get a feel for how these things operate. We'll cover some of the most common applications and even jump into some of the more advanced programming capability that's now available in the Pixie Plus app only with the sensors and everything else within the Pixie ecosystem as well. So let's do the tech specs first and no doubt below you'll be able to find the installation manual which has all of these details in there. So the important thing to know about both of these sensors is that they're Pixie master devices, meaning that they get scanned by the Pixie and Pixie Plus apps in exactly the same way as any other master Pixie product does. And that's because these devices actually have a relay inside them that you connect to the load. From an installation perspective, you'll discover in the installation manual that these are pretty standard uh, three wire installation for a sensor meaning that if you've already got a home that's got an indoor or an outdoor sensor that's traditionally wired and is not really a smart sensor it's just a sensor it's really easy to swap the pixie ones over and provide some smarts to the home that they may not have had before in addition to that because they're a master device they can be paired to the pixie multifunction controller the powered multifunction or the remote control. That's the basic tech specs that we're talking about. Now we might just jump into some of the individual specifications for each of those products to dive a little bit deeper for you. The outdoor sensor is a pretty familiar body shape. You've seen a lot of these around. It comes in a white version and a black version. So they've got a 2000 watt resistive load relay inside or 500 VA for LED. They're IP66. You've got a timeout period from 10 seconds to 30 minutes that you can set either from the dials that are on board or through the app. The detection range is 12 to 15 meters with a 110 degree visible sight line. So with these four operating modes that we'll go into, there's also different color LED so that when you're setting it up and testing it and making sure that things are working right, you can get an indication that it's in the correct mode. Now you can leave these LED indicators on or within the app, you have the option to be able to disable these. These four operating modes are auto mode where the sensor is operating as a sensor. If I see motion, do something. If I don't see motion, turn off. Override on, so make sure that the load or the light that's being controlled is actually in the on state. Override off, so it kills the sensor and kills the light. So no matter what happens with movement, there will be uh, no activation of the sensor, so therefore no light in this case. And the final one is to put it into PE mode or sunset switch mode. It's an 800 watt resistive relay on board and 400 VA for LED loads. 72 mil cutout, so it's super simple to fit in the, in the flush with a standard hole saw size. And you've got about an eight meter detection range at 2.4 to 2.7. So pretty standard from a detection range perspective. Like the outdoor sensor, the indoor sensor has a number of operating modes, but with the indoor sensors, there's three instead of four. Auto mode, where the sensor is operating as a sensor. If I see motion, activate the load. After the timeout, deactivate the load. Override on, so you're overriding the load on no matter what's happening with the motion. And override off, disable the sensor and turn the light off. Again, these can be scheduled. Uh, they can be recorded as part of a scene and you can change between these modes at any time. I mentioned pairing a couple of times and of course any Pixie Master device as these sensors are can be paired with a multifunction controller or a remote control multifunction controller. And once you pair a device to a sensor, you get a predetermined way that that multifunction works. So you don't have to go through a whole lot of setup. It automatically works straight out of the box. Out of the box, once it's installed, a single press puts it back to auto mode. So whatever mode it was in, single press, it will put it into auto mode. If you double tap it, it will put it into override on mode, meaning that the light's on. Triple press it. So you've got a triple press functionality now with the uh, multifunction control. The triple press will put it into disable mode or turn it off. And if you happen to pair it to the outdoor sensor, six presses would put it into PE mode. Most homeowners will probably only use a single press and a double press. What are some of the applications We'll start with the indoor sensor. 
And these are really pretty practical things that you'd see every day. So for example, um, in a hallway, a long hallway, you might like the lights to come on at night time. I'll go into a little bit more detail about what else you can do with that. For powder rooms and bathrooms and that kind of stuff, where you may have an LED strip under a vanity. And when you walk in, you want the sensor to kick off the LED strip. So you've got some low level light, or you've got some ambient light instead of direct light or a down light. The outdoor sensor, typically we're gonna be putting that for porch lights, for eve lighting, for landscape lighting, back in front of the house, side of the house that kind of stuff, sort of where it acts as a security lighting sensor, so to speak. But of course, you can put it in your garage uh, and have the, you know, as the garage door opens and the sensor sees you, turns on more than just that, that little light on top of the garage motor, which doesn't really produce enough light. So from a, an application perspective, everywhere where you use a normal sensor, you can of course use these Pixie sensors. I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of detail here, but there is a new feature in Pixie called Program, which is a conditional logic program. Now don't let that confuse you. We'll just relate this back to the sensors to give you some ideas of how this could be used. And we'll use the indoor sensor. And one of those examples that I gave a little bit earlier today, where you might have uh, a PIR sensor in the hallway. And as you walk out of the bedrooms that are adjoining the hallway, the lights come on. Now, one of the cool things about these sensors is that you don't actually have to connect a load. And using the program function, you can actually send a message to any other Pixie device when that sensor activates or deactivates. So for example, let's say we create a little program that if the sensor sees motion between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m., Monday to Friday, then turn the hallway lights to 10% because I've got a Pixie dimmer in my hallway. And then after five minutes of no motion, turn the hallway lights off or dim the hallway lights off. Now, if you're using a Gen 3 dimmer, you could turn those hallway lights off by sending out a scene that dims over 60 seconds. So I've got my on, the lights come on to 10% straight away. And then my off is after five minutes of no motion, slowly dim over 60 seconds to the off state. That's because the sensor is no longer controlling the load, it's simply controlling signaling onto the Pixie network. So that's a really good example of how to use the indoor sensor to get some smarts that until now wasn't possible with Pixie. That's really the, the sensors. Encourage you to download that installation manual and have a look at it. And really, if you're doing sensors, the Pixie sensors are well-priced. You've got all those smarts built into it and it really helps put more Pixie devices into a home. Of course, they're Bluetooth, part of the Bluetooth mesh. And so they act as Bluetooth mesh repeaters, just like other devices. So they're another thing to help out with the Bluetooth mesh capability, but really it provides you the ability to deliver an even smarter home with more capability, and importantly, stop some of the complexity that we've had previously integrating third-party sensors into Pixie.